let us pray Lord God in whom all find refuge we appeal to your boundless mercy grant to the soul of your servant Helen a kindly welcome cleansing of sin release from the chains of death and entry into everlasting life we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So, good morning everybody, and welcome to St. Bunchard's Church. As we gather today to celebrate this Mass in thanksgiving for the life and love of Helen Benson. We pray the Lord will reward her for her goodness and bring her now into his eternal home where she may be at rest and at peace with God and her deceased loved ones forever in heaven. We pray not only for Helen but in a special way for her family, her sons, her daughters, her extended family members, relatives, friends, neighbours, all who mourn her passing, that God will comfort, console and strengthen you in your sadness. Some family members are unable to be with us this morning, but they are tuned in to our Mass here from New Zealand, Australia and elsewhere throughout the world. We warmly welcome you, we are with you in spirit, as we know you are with us and together we celebrate this mass in thanksgiving for helen we begin our celebration as always aware of our own unworthiness our own failings our own shortcomings the times may be when we failed to show love in our lives and we ask god's mercy and forgiveness I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to Helen, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. So we listen now to the Word of God. Alan will do the first reading. Eve will sing the psalm and Michael will do the second reading. A 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord of both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God, as scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. This is the word of the Lord. letter of St. John. My dear people, let us love one another since love comes from God and everyone who loves is begotten by God and know God. Anyone who fails to love can never know God because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only son that he so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love God, love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. Love will come to its imperfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. Again, I would just like to begin by welcoming you all to St. Munchens here today from near and far. On behalf of the Benson family and to thank you for coming and for being with them in their hour of need. As we gather to celebrate this Mass, we do so in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to God for the life and love of Helen. I suppose in many ways we are here to celebrate Helen's life, her good long, happy, yet extremely fulfilled life, rather than to mourn her passing. Inevitably, you will mourn the loss of a loved one, and particularly a mother. To do otherwise would be inhuman. But today we mourn in thanksgiving for the loss of a wonderful lady, a loving wife, mother, granny, and a, and a supportive and loving relative and friend. I would like to offer my deepest sympathies to those who mourn Helen's passing. Firstly, to her daughters Kay and Talina, to her sons Niall, Gary, Michael, Stephen, Alan and Desmond. I know that Stephen and Desmond are in Australia and New Zealand. So we offer you our deepest sympathies. We're sorry you're not with us, but we know you are with us in spirit as we are with you. Also to our loving sons-in-law, Johnny and Joe and daughters-in-law, Claire, Mary, Leslie, Yvette and Natasha, her grand and great-grandchildren, relatives, nephews, nieces and friends. And to assure you, of a continued remembrance in our masses and prayers here in St. Munchens, where indeed Helen had long associations. You know, it's never, ever easy to accept death, irrespective of age, illness, or whatever. Bidding farewell at any stage in life is always challenging, as I'm sure it was for Helen when her sons would be heading off to Australia, New Zealand, or elsewhere. It's always hard to say goodbye, but in this modern technological era, there are so many ways of keeping in contact through phoning and Skyping and Zooming and texting and even visiting, as many a parent have visited uh, their loved ones elsewhere throughout the world. But when the parting is final and in death, and with someone of the caliber of Helen, it undoubtedly compounds the sorrow. Not only have you lost someone, but you yourselves can feel quite lost. And bidding farewell to Helen today and praying for her loss is tempered with the knowledge that her suffering, her anxiety, any discomfort she may have had is now all behind her. Helen is at rest. Helen is at peace. You know, I believe that when someone we love dies, 
be it a mother or a granny or a great granny or whatever the relationship, in a sense, we too die a little. We know that we can never be exactly the same again. Why? Because an area in life, the familiar voice, the footsteps, the shared memories, the long associations, the laughs, the jokes, the advice, the visiting of your homes, all has suddenly disappeared and cannot ever be recreated. Yes, it is indeed a heart-rending experience because the one you loved and still love has a place in your hearts. But humanly speaking, you are unable to find a place in hers. In all your own different ways, you came to know and to love this lady. Yes, without doubt, she played a part in your lives and helped to make you what you are. That in itself is the power of love. Yes, your love for her and her love for you has, even if only a little, changed your life. You know, God's greatest gift to us was his son. And he was given to all people for all times. And it was at his father's bequest that Christ took upon himself the dark adventure of death. Yes, it was on the third day his father raised him from the dead. And you know, the Christian church from the very first moment of its existence has preached and believed that what happened to Christ on Easter Sunday morning would also happen to us. We shall be raised to new life because he took upon himself the experience of pain and death. And that is why, although we mourn the departure of those we love, we do so in the knowledge that we are celebrating their homecoming. In the preface of the Mass later on, you will hear me say that in death, life is changed, not ended. And when the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, as Helen's does today, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And surely this is what we're all striving for, eternal happiness with God in heaven. We know not the day, not the hour. As scripture says, it can come like a thief in the night when we least expect it. But we're all masters of our own destiny. Where we go when we die lies entirely in our own hands. It's how we live our lives. It's how we love one another. It's how we are judged. Yes, Christ died harshly surrounded by fear and by anger and then having passed through death's life death's doorway he was brought by his father into a new life of glory and so jesus by dying he destroyed our death and by rising he restored our life in other words he died in order to show his friends and followers how they could find their way to their home <clears throat> all of us you know i believe are here in this life to echo as it were the life of christ we're here to grow in wisdom and age like him to reach out like him in healing to the wounded of the world we're here to love children to have compassion on the weak and the suffering we're here to make our hearts known to our friends to take up our crosses, to forgive others, and to be forgiven, and to find, as it were, mountain places for prayer, and at all times to have courage to oppose evil. You know, this litany, I gather, could continue for us today because I believe these facets of Christ are very much alive for us this morning. Why? because you glimpsed them in the life and love of Helen Benson. And so we ask ourselves, how do we remember this great lady? I think Helen's life possibly from speaking to family members and neighbors 
could be summed up under the headings family, faith, friendship, and service. She was first and foremost a family lady, loved everything about them and their achievements and their extended families. Where she loved all of her eight children, her grand and great ch grandchildren took precedence. I don't know why or why grandparents always fall madly in love with grand and great ch grandchildren, but it does happen. But they seem to get more from the grandchildren even than they do from their own children. I suppose they have to rear them, all eight of them, and do all that's necessary. Where the grandchildren come and visit, they come and go. So they always love the grandchildren. Yes, she gave in abundance, but she received also a hundredfold. Love was a quality that was so evident in the Benson household. Now, I'm not going to canonize you lads, so don't get carried away. <laughs> Next to her family was her faith. Her prayer, faith, and devotion was a constant bedrock. In fact, they were both entwined, faith and good works. They worked hand in hand for Helen. Not only did she practice her faith, a regular churchgoer and worshipper, here in St. Munchens and constantly booking masses for deceased family members, relatives and friends. And of course, the Padre Pio prayer that she recited daily, and I will do so now. And it goes, love moved you to care for the sick, to attract sinners, to be forgiving and to deeply live the mystery of the Eucharist. That was a daily prayer of Helen's. And yes, she lived it to the full. She believed in the power of prayer. Padre Pio played a significant role in her life. The candle was always lighting, I gather, in the kitchen. You know, there is so much that we can learn from people of Helen's caliber. Despite, despite all the difficulties and the challenges of life, as they grew up, the living and practicing of the faith was paramount. She was supportive in every way, even to the point of gifting slates for the restoration of this church to her children. So lads, don't forget, if you haven't paid your 25 euro for the slate, Helen, I'll make sure they do it. <laughs> Despite, as I said, all the difficulties, she was a great supporter of the church. Helen has been described as a beautiful and wonderful lady. She was humble, she was kind, gentle and generous, with not a bad cell in her being. She was inspirational, had a great sense of humour, and was a real lady. Now, I was reading over the condolences on the RIP, and I picked up lots of that from it. She was the ideal mother and wife and granny and great granny. You know, without doubt, Helen was a gift to you in so many ways. You've shared in her faith. <clears throat> You've been lifted by her enthusiasm, cheered by her smile, warmed by her friendship. And now God's gift is returning to her. And Helen, whose death we mourn today, is at home, at rest, and at peace. And so our prayer this morning is that she now enjoys that peace and happiness and that God has taken her into his safekeeping where she is happily reunited with her deceased loved ones, her husband, Sir, her parents and siblings in their eternal home. John O'Donoghue, it's a quote that I oftentimes use at funeral masses. He was a well-known writer. He was a former priest. He's now gone to God. But in one of his books entitled Anam Kara, he was describing death 
and it goes as follows. Helen, may you be given every blessing and shelter that you need. May there be a beautiful welcome for you in the home that you are going to. You're not going somewhere strange. Rather, you're going back to the home that you never left. May your going be sheltered and your welcome assured. May your soul smile in the embrace of your Anankara. Amen. <clears throat> we pause now for a moment and we remember Helen and we say thanks to God for her and pray for the happy repose of her soul. I invite the following to come forward for the prayers. Please, Louise, David, Emma, Laura, Jess and Adam for the prayers. In baptism, Helen, my Nana, was given the pledge of eternal life. May she now be admitted into the kingdom of God and the company of all her family that have gone before her, especially her mam, Nellie, and her husband and my granddad, Cyril. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Now, oh. in these sad and difficult days for Nana B's family, let us take consolation in the knowledge that she is still watching over us and that we will be reunited with her one day in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Sorry. Uh, Lord, thank us for the gift of life that we all share. Make us more aware of the various gifts and talents that you have given us, especially those we take for granted. May we use them to make the world a better place, as my Nana did throughout her life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all here present, that our memories of Nana may be a source of comfort and strength to us, and help us cope with that sadness that we feel in her absence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For, our, for all our deceased relatives and friends, that God will look after them and bring them into the warmth and happiness of his presence and welcome them to share in the gift of eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, thank you for giving us our Nana, whose life was as influential as it was fruitful. And please welcome a true servant of yours, into your kingdom as a just reward for a life well lived. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our Father, these are our prayers. We ask you to hear them and all the secret thoughts and intentions of our own hearts. And if it is your holy will, that you may grant our requests through Christ our Lord. I forgot to put out the gifts of bread and wine, so Melanie and Sarah, apologies. Just imagine you brought them up. and 
stand and pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. It's with the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to Helen, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so we kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Together now we proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Brendan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Helen, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, all our deceased loved ones, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the Saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. We stand now and together pray in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. We pause for a moment and we think peace in our hearts. Peace with one another, peace with God. Together, Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of communion, we will have two communion stations. I'll distribute here in the centre, and our Eucharistic minister will go halfway down the church. Those who wish to receive at both stations, if you'd come up the centre, please, and down the sides. Come bow me. 
Just for a moment, I'm going to read the reflection on the last page of the little booklet. It's entitled, The Watcher. She always leaned to watch for us, anxious if we were late, in winter by the window, in summer by the gate. And though we mocked her tenderly, who had such foolish care, the long way home would seem more safe because she waited there. Her thoughts were all so full of us, she never could forget. And so I think that where she is, she must be watching yet. Waiting till we come home to her, anxious if we are late, watching from heaven's window, leaning on heaven's gate. Remain seated now for the final prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Helen, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I invite Niall now to say a few words. And I was doing so well until he read that reflection. God bless him. It was fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. First of all, I want to thank everyone for their presence here today. And, uh, and I know Mam would be chuffed pink to see the church full of people. She loved this place with a passion. And, uh, and I was going to go on and tell you that she bought us all a slate for Christmas, but Dawn has already told you that. But she'd be absolutely thrilled at that, all right? I also want to thank uh, Luke for doing the camera, and I'll break with tradition in a few minutes, Luke. Uh, Eve for her wonderful singing, thank you very much indeed. And Donald for trying to give us the best glimpse of man through words that he possibly could. You did a fantastic job, thank you very much indeed, all right? I don't think words ever capture my mum uh, fully, and I'm not saying that what I'll do will do the same. And Gary did a fantastic job of putting this together for me, um, and I hope that I can give you a flavour of my mum. But I actually think you have to live the experience of my mother before you get a real flavour for what she was. And uh, she came across as, you know, loving, caring. And, and last night, this came across very clearly from everyone that came into Thompson's funeral home. Uh, the words unique, one soft, sadly missed, wonderful woman uh, came in the whole time. And I was actually very proud uh, that people felt that way about my mum. First off then, I suppose it's probably the best thing to say that all those outpouring of condolences that we've received have been completely overwhelming and in a very positive way. Uh, as devastated as our sudden bereavement is and has been, we've also come to realise how incredibly lucky we have been to have my mum in our lives. Um, she was a powerful, loving presence that we've had and we can't complain, we've had that for 90 years. Mam's passing will leave a huge void in every one of us, but inside in that void comes flooding in wonderful memories of Mam and her gatherings, her meetings, reunions, meals, pure joy, happiness, laughter, and actually sometimes unbelievable noise inside in the kitchen in 58 or Dwyer's Villas. You couldn't hear the talk. And then of course, as it got noisier, everybody had to raise the tone again till we were all nearly screeching. But that was the type of place that Mammy created. And you know, it'll be forever in our, in our hearts that way. We are here to celebrate a life. Um, I said to some people outside earlier on, uh, I've done enough uh, sadness over the last couple of days. Uh, and, and then last night was an absolute true celebration of Mam's life. And, and so it should be, because she was a fiercely independent woman. She was very proud. And in that pride, she was proud of everything. She was very proud of her neighborhood. She was proud of the fact that she was a Limerick woman and she was living in Tomaget, which was a, being a soda cake, which is very important to my mum. Right? She's proud of her family. 
She was proud of her own brothers and sisters. She's very proud of her neighbors and the friends and people that are here today, but especially proud, and, and Donald hit the nail on the head, she loved those grandkids and those great grandkids like, like nobody's business. She was very, very proud of them. In fact, the whole house is full of photographs of the kids, right? Every living space that's in the house is filled with a frame and a picture of some description. And believe you me, when it comes to cleaning them, which I've done on several occasions, you could take six hours just to clean the number of pictures. So she's, so, and, 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 and to be honest with you, when you walk into the room and you see all those photographs, you just know how warm that house is. And she was also incredibly talented, my mum, and she gifted hands. And she skillfully created many, many wedding dresses, um, communion dresses, and confirmation outfits. Um, and she did that not just for her own children, she did it for neighbors, she did it for friends, she did it for in-laws. Um, and we got a lovely letter from, from one of our in-laws just to say that she made her uh, you know, communion dress as well, and she still has it to this day. It's such a gorgeous thing. She also lovingly altered many of our clothes as we grew, and as the family and expanded grew as well. The group photograph that's at the back of the miscellet, and I hope you get a chance, and if you didn't even pick it up on the way in, you might get it on the way out, is a, a real testament, right, of my mum's love and devotion to her family. Mam's faith was central, and Donald has already pointed that out, it was central to her life, with a deep devotion, and like Donald already filled you in on Padre Pio. There's a line in the prayer that, that Donald already said, and I'll say it again, love moved you to care for the sick, to attract the sinners, and to be forgiving and to deeply live the mystery of the Eucharist. And this was the essence of my mam's faith. Mam had a large candle as well, as Donald says, but what he left out was that, you know, everybody and anybody that had a, um, a sickness or, or, or some form of a, a request uh, was actually scribbled onto little notes and stuck under the candle. And everyone in need, and it wasn't just her immediate family, but almost everyone she knew or who had been lucky enough to hear my mam say, I light a candle for you and I say a prayer to Padre Pia for you. Don't you worry, it'll be sorted out. She had that profound belief. Mam's profound faith, caring, belief, and love to the message is this, and this is the message I want everyone here to take away from today, that she was that person, she was that caring person, and that profound faith. And like I said, uh, you know, absolutely chuffed that you got the numbers into the church today because this is the way she feels that this church should be full all the time. God bless her. Right? Knowing that Mam now has been reunited, you know, with her brothers and her sisters and her family is absolutely a great comfort to this family here. And the feeling now and the peace and serenity of the last few days has been actually wonderful to know that she's gone where she wants to be. It was Mam's wish that we pray for her soul on its journey to be reunited with her husband and my dad, or our dad, Cyril, her mum, Nelly, and her own dad, Patrick T., and her brothers and sisters who have gone on ahead of her. And by the way, at this stage, she's now been beautifully embraced. Knowing Mam has now been reunited, I'm sure, is the greatest gift that we could give her. To my mum, the legend, may she rest in peace. And before I finish, I'm now going to break with tradition because this is a celebration of my mom's life. So I'd like Luke, the cameraman, if you could just turn around and uh, even to the church and the people there and people just give my mom away. I give my brothers and over in Australia a wave. And I'll ask you to give her a nice clap to say goodbye to my mom. <laughs> Niall, that was a beautifully delivered, heartfelt eulogy. You did her proud. Um, she seems to have reared a great family. I knew she gave you the slates for Christmas, but the point I was making is that she, you might like to keep that tradition going. <laughs> we have an awful lot of them to put on the roof. <laughs> Helen, we'll stand for the final farewell, and thanks for the hint about the slates. She was very much on my side, anyhow. Before we go our separate ways now, let us take leave of Helen.
May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet Helen again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. We pause now for a moment while I sprinkle her coffin with holy water which reminds us of the waters of our own baptism when we were born into eternal life. And then as I incense her coffin, it reminds us that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit and must be respected both in life and in death. And so for a few moments, we pray silently for the happy repose of Helen's soul. Father of mercies, we commend Helen in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you blessings. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Helen in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Helen and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Helen forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham and where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. In peace now, let us take Helen to her place of rest. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the sun.